Western where he is what we call a cowboy. My mother was an educator who I had for my third grade teacher. But some of you don't know, right after I was in San Luis, uh, when I was born, my parents actually took me to Iran. Uh, and so what you're going to find is my godfather was in Iran, first slide. Uh, some of you know him as Ayatollah Khomeini. <laughs> <laughs> and what you're going to find that happened uh, in 1979 was he raised me uh, for, you know, he was my secondary father. Uh, and what I realized is he taught me a lot. And uh, by this point, uh, I already had facial hair. Uh, I spoke six languages. And what I realized is war was brewing. Uh, and in 1980, what happened was I basically went and talked to the Iraqi soldiers. Uh, and what I tried to do was to get them to lay down their arms. Now, I grew really quickly. Uh, I was about six feet when I was one year old. Uh, I convinced them to lay down their arms, but Saddam Hussein continued with the war, uh, and thus for eight years it would go on. Now, what happened then is my parents got kind of sick of the Middle East, and what we decided to do was uh, basically to come back home to America, where, as many of you know, my interest in video games actually started. Now, when I was two years old, I didn't know what a patent was, but I designed a game, next one, called Ross Man. Uh, and with, uh, a on the screen and ate a lot of uh, yummy, tasty digital pixels. Uh, someone stole my idea, later called it Pac-Man. Uh, but it was fine. Uh, and after my idea was stolen, I was really upset. And so my mom asked that maybe I take out my aggressions in a different form, that maybe dance or something else could help. Uh, and so what I did, I did tap, and I did swing, and I did a lot of dance. Uh, and at a talent show, a man approached me and asked if I would be in his music video. And in 1982, I happened to be, the next one, uh, in Thriller. <laughs> was watching the movie, he saw my moves and knew, based on my moves, Ronald Reagan called me and said, I know you would make a good diplomat. Uh, and so what you're going to find is Ronald Reagan consulted me on a variety of issues. Uh, and one of the most serious ones is terrorists had essentially killed 60 diplomats, uh, diplomats sorry, in Beirut the following year, and he asked me what we should do. And I consoled him and I said, well, they, basically, we have to go see the victims. We need to make sure that we are shown, America is seen, caring about our soldiers. Uh, and then in the next slide, 1983, uh, you can see me with the president there. Uh, after this, uh, you're going to find that Reagan and I had a lot of discussion because it was basically the years where the Soviet Union was falling apart. Uh, and what you're going to find is I consulted Reagan on a lot of things. Uh, and in 1984, when the Olympics happened, uh, what you're going to find is the Soviet Union because they protested capitalism, actually backed out of the Olympics. But I think we all know the real reason the Soviet Union backed out, 1984, when I won four gold. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> <laughs> I track of my own life. All right, where am I? <laughs> ah, gotcha. So basically, after the Olympics, after I, I shamed the Russians into their, uh, their a boycotting of the Olympics, uh, I realized we needed to talk. There, this couldn't go on, so basically what happened is I had to go over to, uh, to Russia and talk to Gorbachev himself. Uh, in 1985 was when I encouraged Gorbachev to take up a new policy of openness and to restructure his economy. Uh, they were my ideas. He later called them perestroika and glasnost. Uh, but you can see here in 85, I had our, our fireside <laughs> Uh, while I was there, I did talk to Gorbachev, and I told him I was worried not only about the Soviet Union, but with what was going on in neighboring Ukraine. Uh, 1986, I even posted my scientific study, go ahead, uh, where I had concerns about the nuclear reactor at Chernobyl. However, Gorbachev did not listen, and that uh, nuclear reactor had a meltdown in 1986. Uh, now, some of you may know some of the history of what happened in 1987. Some of you may not know that I was actually a lawyer for a little bit. Uh, and one of my last cases I tried was uh, the last Nazi war criminal uh, in 1987 was tried. His name was Klaus Barbie. Uh, go ahead with that one. Uh, and basically, you know I got the conviction. I uh, got the last Nazi war criminal sentence in 1987 to life in prison. Uh, after that, uh, 87... 88, uh, you know what, I forget what I did in 1988, so let's just take a look. 
Ah. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Uh, I forgot I went to Pakistan in 1988, uh, where basically I counseled Benazir Bhutto, the first female uh, leader of a Muslim nation. Uh, basically, we, we, we got along well. Uh, later, she was assassinated, though. Um, after that, uh, basically the next few years, what I did is I focused on breaking down barriers. I was sick of seeing certain things going on. Uh, it was definitely in 1989 when I realized, go ahead, that wall needed to come down. <laughs> I was that first person to sling the sledgehammer at the Berlin Wall. Uh, I single-handedly took down about half of it. Uh, and the other person, uh, joined in. Uh, and in 1990, basically, what happened is after I took down physical walls, I also wanted to break down mental walls. Uh, 1990, that's uh, when I went to South Africa and basically freed Mandela from prison. Uh, so <laughs> The last kind of barrier I needed to break down, uh, most of you know, okay, was just uh, I was going to single-handedly dismantle the Soviet Union in 1991. Uh, so I talked to my buddy Yeltsin, uh, and basically in 1991, go ahead, uh, we, we did that. Uh, uh, essentially that first part. Uh, it's the same thing, Yeltsin needed a lot of coaching in 1992. Uh, it's the formal dissolution of the Soviet Union, where basically I handed him a plaque and said, hey, it's over. Um, after this, though, uh, you can see that I took some, some of my global politics seriously. Uh, and in 1993, after two Black Hawk helicopters were shot down in Somalia, I went to the UN and pleaded that we needed to do more. We needed to rescue those soldiers. Uh, however, even though I was furious, uh, <laughs> I simply did not listen. Uh, I was kind of fed up after the Black Hawk Down, after the Mogadishu incident. Uh, and so what you're going to find, what I did, is I focused more on local politics. Uh, and I figured, you know what, I don't need to help out the world, I can help out my own state of California. Uh, and that's why in 1994, when I heard that somebody was a suspected murderer, was driving away in a white Ford Bronco on the freeway, I chased down O.J. Simpson in my car. <laughs> Uh, eventually I caught OJ, he was later acquitted, uh, but it's okay. Uh, after this, uh, some of you may know, uh, I was actually the youngest person ever on, in space. Go ahead, in 1995, uh, I was on that first flight from the Space Shuttle Discovery. Okay. Uh, I did bring my happy mug. Um, after returning from Earth, uh, some of you may know Ted Kaczynski. Sorry. Who? Uh, he's also known as the Unabomber. Uh, and basically, oh, in 1996, because I it was able to track him down, go ahead, I actually captured the Unabomber. <laughs> <laughs> From my high school army day photo. Uh, no. uh, some of you also know that I enjoy chess. Uh, and so after I caught the Unabomber, basically what I did is uh, I worked on my chess game a little bit. I was coaching Gary Kasparov. Uh, and what happened was Gary, the chess master, uh, had actually lost to Deep Blue, the IBM computer, in 1997. Uh, so after he lost, go ahead, uh, I went ahead and took down the computer. Uh, I was victorious. Um, and uh, all this kind of mental anguish, what I really did is, my, my true passion was psychology. I like counseling and coaching people. Uh, and in 1998, I got a call from an old friend. Uh, he was having some problems with his marriage, uh, and he needed a little bit of counseling because a lot of it was becoming public. Uh, in 1998, go ahead, uh, I, I talked to Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it went through a lot that year. He cried on my shoulder a lot. Uh, that was kind of a drag, so after that emotional kind of conflict with, uh, you know, the dress and all that, uh, I, I devoted my, my life to lighter things. And in 1999, go ahead, I invented Pokemon. Okay. <laughs> and I also used to have long hair. All right. Whoa. Uh, after uh, devoting a year of my life to Pokemon, uh, basically I went back to politics, and I was the one in 2000, go ahead, uh, that figured out because of Florida that Gore should have actually had 20,000 more votes swinging the election to him, even though he won the popular vote, uh, George Bush was our president. Uh, in 2001, I removed the Taliban from power in Afghanistan, go ahead, uh, we had a little celebration, uh, <laughs> even though they came back later. It was also in uh, this same year that I went to uh, Sri Lanka. 
uh, where basically the Tamil Tigers had been at war with the government for many years. Uh, it was in 2002 where I first started the peace process, even though it did not work, go ahead. Uh, here I was trying to negotiate <laughs> peace. Uh, some of you probably didn't know I taught history or taught English at this school because you probably heard what I did in 2003 when I took down Saddam Hussein. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I was the one to capture him. Uh, later, he was sentenced to death. Uh, after capturing Saddam Hussein, I went back to my movie career. Some of you saw me with Kate Winslet. Go ahead, in Finding Neverland. <laughs> <laughs> shot in the oh, south, and that's why I was scared to death in 2005, go ahead, uh, when I had to run away from Hurricane Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> um, after this, after Hurricane Katrina, uh, I basically once again was fascinated with natural phenomena, tornadoes, cyclones, hurricanes, all that stuff. I even started a little bit of astronomy, uh, and it was in 2006 when I proved that Pluto was not a planet. Okay? Uh, that was my argument right there. Okay? Where, where are you? <laughs> uh, adding to my scientific stuff that uh, I've talked to Don about at length, after I pl proved that Pluto wasn't a planet in 2006, in 2007 I also figured out how to make stem cells out of skin cells. Uh, here's me with my microscope, I think. Yes. Okay. Um, now, some of you may know in 2008 some of Monet's paintings were actually stolen. Uh, and you know me loving art, I was pissed off. Uh, so basically what I did is I flew to Europe, I tracked down the criminal, we don't talk about what happened to them, but I returned the, the paintings to the French police department. Go ahead. Uh, I left them a little note. Okay. Uh, uh, and it was in 2009 when I got a call from an old friend as well. Uh, he asked if I would swear him in as the new president. Uh, I declined, but go ahead. Obama did invite me. Uh, you might have also heard of the Romer Plan, which I co-wrote with President Obama. Uh, he later played, called it health care overhaul. Uh, but in 2010, go ahead, uh, he basically accepted the Romer Plan. Uh, they later changed the name. Uh, lastly, this year, most of you know that uh, I, I missed two days of school this year. Uh, and mainly what I was doing is I was sparking revolutions across the country. Mostly in our last slide, even though it's... <laughs>